Hello, and welcome. I am Exolite, and this is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a child who disappeared. His name is Derek Angerbretson, and I'm going to tell you about his case. And then below, if you'd like to leave comments, we can talk about what your thoughts are on this mystery. Before I get started, if you would please give this video a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed and you would like to be, please go ahead and do that. In October, I have the 31 days of Halloween starting, which is 31 days of content that ranges from the haunted and spooky to the mysterious and strange, some educational, some things to give you something to think about, and some classic literature from the very original horror story writers, which I love to do every year. All right, let's start talking about this. It was December 5th, 1998, when eight-year-old Derek Angerbretson went with his father and grandfather to Rocky Point, Oregon, which is about 30 miles from Klamath Falls and immediately south of Crater Lake National Park. For those of you who've been around here and listened to my National Park stories, you'll know that I did a, a series on Crater Lake National Park as I had a very, very close um, friend of mine pass away in the park. It's of particular interest to me, the strange happenings that go on there. The three of them had decided that they were going to go look for a Christmas tree. At some point, Derek walked away. It was a few minutes before his father and grandfather saw that he was missing, and they looked for him, and they couldn't find anything. They did follow some footprints that led to a snow angel that Derek had made. But there was no Derek. They had no idea where he was. So they eventually called the authorities to come in and start a search. They did this by flagging down a passing motorist about 4.13 p.m. Then the motorist traveled to a nearby resort that was approximately two miles away, and he placed a phone call to 911. When law enforcement showed up, they discovered a crude shelter that was made of fir boughs beneath several fallen logs near the area that Derek went missing. But search dogs were unable to detect his scent there, so it didn't seem as though he had climbed in there for protection to keep warm. And then, suddenly, extreme weather conditions began in the area. It began snowing. So all traces of any other footsteps were never going to be found. Due to this extreme weather, the authorities quickly decided that if Derek was lost, he would have already succumbed to the cold. But Derek's parents stated that their son had grown up in the mountains, and even at his young age, he was used to walking distances of up to 20 miles at a time. And he had done so in steep terrain. So they didn't believe for one minute that their son wouldn't be able to find his way back, especially considering that he had footprints in the snow and all he had to do was turn around and follow his footprints back to his father and grandfather. When his father and grandpa had found his footprints, they made a, a kind of a loop from where his father had last seen him with them to a clearing near the road. That's where they found the snow angel. A snow plow then came along and obliterated even those tracks, along with any tracks that would have led away from the snow angel. So no prints were going to be found that way either, whether it had snowed or not. There were several pieces of chopped wood discovered nearby the snow angel and Derek had with him a small hatchet. He was also dressed in a snowsuit. In the late evening, 
when the blizzard hit, the search was hampered and came to a stop. The initial searches were completed with foot and search canines, as well as aerial searches using civil air patrol planes and an Air Force Reserve helicopter. Also, several relatives came and undertook independent searches on their own. On December 13, 1998, eight days into the investigation, Klamath County Police suspended their search. David's family continued their independent searches and camped at the site in a donated camper following over the next few weeks, while hundreds of volunteers continued to organize search efforts. On December 18th, further search efforts were stopped because there was sub-zero temperatures and it made it unsafe for anyone to travel in the area. In the following months, there were more than 10,000 hours spent performing ground searches looking for Derek by now, what would have probably have been Derek's body. Early in the investigation, a witness said that they saw an unidentified man struggling with a young boy in the area later during the day when Derek had disappeared. The witness ignored the event as he assumed that the man was the boy's father. Additional reports were made of an unidentified man driving a two-door Honda asking passerbys for directions in the forest that day. Now, if he had been kidnapped, that would have been a random, random happening. I don't think that a man drives up into the forest where people would be looking for Christmas trees and expected to find a child. That would be a crime of opportunity, to say the least, to just stumble upon a child in the forest while you're driving down a road. It feels unlikely to me. It feels unlikely that this mountain wise eight-year-old boy would have gotten into another vehicle unless he was struggling like that witness said in which case it's unfortunate that well I think almost anybody would probably assume that the boy was with his parents that was his father considering the location they were at On September 24, 1990, graffiti was discovered in a bathroom in a rest area approximately 300 miles south of Portland. Law enforcement said that the graffiti referred to Derek's disappearance, and as soon as his parents were told this, they drove to view the graf graffiti. And his mother, Lori, stated to the press, quote, I think it's just a big, sick joke. I thought if somebody would have had Derek, if they had put this on the wall, then they were wanting to be caught. If they were wanting to be caught, why didn't they leave something of Derek's there? The contents of that graffiti, what it said, has never been released to the public. I assume that they figured that if it had been somebody who kidnapped Derek, that then they would be the only person who knew what it said other than the authorities and their parents and whoever else had been in that bathroom, I suppose. But I think they wanted to cut down on the crazy people calling and claiming it was them. In 2008, it was confirmed that Frank James Milligan, who was serving a sentence for assaulting a 10-year-old boy in Oregon, was considered a potential suspect in Derek's disappearance. But, like I said, that would have been the coincidence of all coincidences. To be out in the middle of nowhere and stumble upon a little boy who'd wandered off from his father and his grandfather and was making snow angels. So, what did happen to Eric? 
it's difficult to understand these cases when things like a snowplow suddenly comes along and removes all the footprints. When they call off the search after eight days, this is why, this is why going missing in a national park area is so dangerous. The search for you will not last by the authorities. They give up so quickly. They write it off to um, an injury, falling in, in, falling into a crevice, falling into a river and drowning, being attacked by an animal. It's, it's written off so quickly, which feels so suspicious because people do not disappear without a trace. They just do not under normal circumstances. They leave traces. They leave a wrapper. They leave their footprints. They leave a jacket. If you have fallen into a river, your clothes will show up on a shoreline at some point. If you have fallen down a cliff, it's likely that eventually your clothes are going to show up in a bird's nest or have animals drag it off. It's so confusing. And then, of course, we have a weather event, a blizzard, which contributes to more time lost searching for this boy. So if you want to leave your comments below and tell me your thoughts, I'd appreciate that. If you would, again, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to. Good night.